guys, welcome to a new video and upon popular request, today I'm going to try and recreate another hairstyle from Mark Campbell's self-instructor in the art of hair work, dressing hair, making curls, switches, braids and hair jewelry of every description. The Victorian hairdressing manual that I found on archive.org a while ago. I already have a video up where I do a hairstyle from this book, so if you haven't seen that already, I suggest you go watch that first. I talk a little bit more about the background of this book and things like that in that video, but basically this is a hairdressing manual by someone who manufactures hair pieces and hair accessories, and he also talks about how to make hair pieces and um, kind of additions to use in the hair, because those were very, very popular in this time period. We are talking mid to late 19th century here. The book was published in 1867. Proper Victorian hairdressing. I'm really excited to try another hairstyle. The last one I did was really simple. This one I think is going to be a little bit harder to do, but still definitely doable, I guess, looking at the picture. Today we are going for the Parisian headdress. This headdress, both bold and graceful, is suitable for any complexion or age when the physiognomy allows it. Let's hope mine does. We'll find out soon enough. So Mark's instructions are very short and concise but pretty understandable, especially when you have the picture to compare them with. So he starts by saying to comb back the hair from the forehead between the temples, make a large puff on the temples and three puffs above each ear. You can see that in the photo, so shouldn't be too hard. I'm gonna try and do this. Yeah, I think about this much of my hair is going to be just pulled back. So I'm going to clip that away for now. Let me take my glasses off just for a second here. I'm gonna make one large curl or puff right here. And then there's gonna be three small ones behind it. So I think I'm just gonna clip this hair back first and make my large one. I have um, quite little hair over here, so I hope I'm able to actually make a large puff out of this, but I probably should be able to do that. So I have a little comb here, and after all that 18th century hairstyling I've been doing lately, I am quite versed in the art of making puffs, so I should be able to get this down. Uh, I'm not going to use anything to fortify this, so I'm just going to rely on my teasing here, which hopefully should be enough. They did still use powder, in these hairstyles in this era it, he refers to using powder at some points in the book but it wasn't used nearly as much as it was in the 18th century the hair when you look at this picture this drawing the hair is shiny which means it definitely wasn't 18th century style powdered so i'm gonna try and keep my hair shiny as well i have a makeup brush here and i'm gonna use the handle to roll my curl around and i'm going to roll it towards my face making sure I'm smoothing down this hair as I go. I've got my roll, now let's spin it down. I'm gonna slide a bobby pin into the center, kind of weave it in there, and well from the bottom as well. Before I move on to the three rolls in the back, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. It's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to keep things symmetrical, I think. We are currently going through a heat wave and I'm sitting under studio lights, so you're gonna see me getting progressively shinier as the video goes on. Um, anyways, time to make the three little puffs in the back. So I'm gonna section off this piece of hair behind my ear. All right, I'm gonna start with the top one and work my way down. I shouldn't have done this on freshly washed hair because my hair does not want to hold a tease at all. Oh well, I'm gonna try my best. Alright, this is what I have now on this side. I have one big roll and then three little ones. I cannot stop my hair from going extremely frizzy. It's because of the heat, sorry. I'm gonna try and do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll be back to show you the next step. He says to place a cushion at the back of the head and comb the hair over it, forming a chignon. So all of this hair, I think I'm gonna place it somewhere around here maybe. Spin up the front hair. 
because I'm gonna need this hair to actually cover that cushion and I'm gonna use this hair to attach the cushion too so I'm just gonna twist it up actually and pin it to my head kind of like this so my hair is just out of the way and then for my cushion I actually just put a bunch of hair extensions into a hair net and they should actually work really well and I'm just gonna stick that onto the back of my head and I'm gonna attach it just using boy pins again Now all I need to do apparently is to take all of this hair and comb it over that cushion that I just made in order to hide it and create a bit of a poof in the back. I'm gonna have to do something about my bangs here so I think I'm just gonna gather those up and put a little bobby pin in because we're gonna have something here that's gonna cover them anyway. As far as the ends go, in the picture it looks like her hair is just a little bit shorter than mine and her ends are just sticking out on the bottom. Obviously I have quite a bit of a tail left so I think I'm just gonna kind of tuck that under. Kind of like that. And then try and pin everything down so that the whole cushion is hidden. It looks like this right now. Time for the next step. Um, place a diadem plate or twist made from a large switch around the top of the head trimmed with leaves or ribbon as shown in the cuts. A switch is a piece of hair extension and I still have the one that I used in the last video so I'm just gonna reuse this one and make it into a twist this time or what he calls a twist we refer to it as a rope braid nowadays so I'm just gonna do that really quickly There we go. And now I am to place that, well, a diadem plate or a diadem twist would have been round. So would have looked something like this. Mine obviously isn't. So I'm gonna have to figure out something to do with these ends because they obviously show. I realized I had completely forgotten to add my ribbon to my little twisty braid thing here. So I'm gonna choose one for my baggy of assorted ribbons. Um, let's see, what shall we go for today? I think something like this should be nice. Maybe the ribbon can actually help um, hide the little end bit here. All right, let's try and attach it and I will just figure out a way to hide the ends as I go. Alright, so here is my finished result. I'll be honest with you guys, I am not that happy with this one. It was much, much harder to do than the first one. And I just really struggled with this one in general. And I think besides the difficulty of the hairstyle itself, it has to do with a lot of external factors. Like for example, the fact that I am pretty much dying of heat stroke over here. <laughs> and also my hair is just particularly difficult to manipulate with today. So I think, you know, there's a lot of things contributing to the fact that this is not probably my best hairstyle, but on the other hand, I do think it is potentially really pretty. I can definitely see this being done in a little bit more of a skillful way and looking really, really nice. And honestly, I can even see this working as a modern day formal hairstyle if you were to, you know, adapt a few things here and there. In any case, I think it's really cool that we get to recreate actual historical authentic hairstyles like this. And I absolutely love finding sources like this book that I have here by Mark Campbell. So yeah, it was really fun to do, even though the results aren't everything that I'd hoped for. I hope you enjoyed this video. Anyways, guys, if you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there'll be links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!